Over the last few weeks, I've been living in Doha, Qatar. It's been a crazy experience to say the least, and from exploring the city, the beaches, and the culture, to starting a new job teaching kiteboarding for Yellow Kite School. Getting back into teaching has really got me thinking about the basics. So this week, I've decided to teach you five steps to better board control. Hey guys, this is Blake from Matt Kite, and today I'm going to give you five tips on better board control. So just going over five different little things that I've found over the years that have helped me after I've mastered the kite, then focus more onto the board, and little tricks here and there that come to me that seem to help my riding, and it's all about kite control. It's like 90% kite control, and then the rest is board control. So. Once you've mastered the kite, and there's a lot of people out there who are wakeboarders who know a lot of board skills, but a lot of people haven't had much experience in board skills before, but fly the kite and then you get riding, and so it's nice to be able to just have a few more tips to affecting your board skills, and that's another big part of kiting. So um, the first step is just to make sure with whatever you're riding, you just got to make sure whatever straps or riding boots that you invest or make whatever you're using on your feet, make them really comfortable. So it's kind of similar with skiing or snowboarding that you pretty much ride any plank that you put on your feet, whether it be snowboard, skis, telemark skis, whatever. But um, you want to make sure that you have comfy ski boots and snowboard boots because you don't want shin bang, you don't want to just be uncomfortable as you're out there because it's a lot of gear, a lot of weight, a lot of time spent, heavy things on your feet. So. Same thing goes for kiting, that um, you can ride any board, just try and make sure that you have comfortable foot straps. So I know there's a lot of people with a lot of skill out there that can ride pretty much anything. You can ride two by four if you put straps on it, but it's nice to have straps that are comfy and that you have them positioned in the right way. So um, you don't want your straps to be like this because if you're like this, you're trying to twist to go upwind and then your feet are having to be angled in the foot flat foot straps so um, kind of like duck your stance out a little bit with your foot straps or boots so that, that way as you're opening up either way your uh, foot straps will be in right position so you don't want them to be like this because then you're having to angle your feet in there and then you're kind of twisting the foot strap so um, and if you're riding strapless just get some really grippy wax to uh, help stick that to your feet so it's almost like cheating with some waxes because it sticks to your feet so well. So make sure you have the proper equipment on your feet and that makes all the difference for riding the board. Tip number two is you want your shoulders stacked over your back knee and then have your front knee extended. So pretty much 80-90% of your weight is distributed over your back knee. And what that does is it angles your board in the water so you can edge more. Whereas if you just lean straight back like this, then your board is just going to be edging like this your kite will be here pulling you, so you're not gonna be able to edge up windows. So, um, step number two is just make sure to stack your shoulder weight and your body weight over your back knee. And in order to do this, don't just lean back like this, but lean back like this. So, kind of like twist, lean back, open up, and uh, stack that weight over your back knee. So, most of your weight is distributed over the back knee. And then the front leg is just kind of used to swivel, so you can open your hips, use your front leg, have, keep it straight, your back leg bent, and just make sure that for good board control, you want to have a good edge. So in order to have an edge, you want to put your weight on the back of the board so that the board angles into the water and really digs in. So twist shoulders, distribute the weight over the back, your front leg straight, and then you can use that to twist around. If your weight is distributed over the whole board in the center, that's going to be just edging and it's not going to, the kite's going to pull you downwind or you're just going to get going really fast. The common mistake is that when kiters are going, your kite's here, you start sending the kite and then you just lean back against it so the kite's pulling you here. And that's good, but your weight's going to be evenly distributed over the board. So you want to push down on one and then pull up on the other so that your board is pushing down in the water and you take right off. Tip number three 
is to use your heels and toes. So once you've figured out how to distribute your weight and put it over the back, you push down on your heels and you pick up on your toes. So that's easy to say, but something you want to keep in mind um, by like really digging your heels in and like kind of angling your toes up like this. Like kind of sometimes I don't even have my my toes on the foot pads. They're more like twisted up just to really dig that edge in and um, that gets your board on a little bit more of an angle and gives you a little bit harder of an edge as you go. So when you're cruising, um, you can just kind of keep your toes down to lock in an edge. But when you really try to edge hard, you can push down on your heels, pick up on your toes. And then when you want to flatten out and ride downwind, push down on your toes, pick up on your heels and using your shoulders and your body weight with that to work as one. So you want everything to be moving fluidly and working together as one thing. Just make sure to be conscious of using your heels and toes to control the board and where it moves. Another thing with your heels and your toes, if you feel yourself losing power or sinking into the water, you might be edging too hard. So whenever you feel yourself like start to sink into the water, um, just bring your knees to your chest and they get real small and then flatten your board by pushing your toes down. So just whenever you feel like you're gonna sink into the water, just get real compact, flatten your toes. That way your board is flat on the water and then that'll keep your body weight over the board on top of the water and then power the kite to continue going. So um, you can use all these like little tricks by heel, toe, knees to the chest, all sorts of things like that in order to keep yourself going. Tip number four is to use your knees and your shoulders as a shock for your body. So say you're coming down real hard, you don't want to just come down like this and you don't want to just come down and take it all with your knees. You want to kind of bring your shoulders to your knees and then right as you land, hop back up. So you can kind of use your knees and your shoulders together and in doing so, you'll create kind of a shock with your body and then you bounce back up and catch it. So um, in order to do this, um, another thing with heels and toes is as you land a trick or if you're uh, coming off of a chop or any sort of thing, you're using your knees and your shoulders together. So you're kind of, as your knees go up and down, your shoulders go up and down with it. So you don't want just your knees to be going up and down and all of your shoulder, chest, and body weight on top of the knees. So that way your knees are doing all of the work. You kind of bounce your knees and your shoulders together so your whole body works in the shock and you can kind of pump over the waves and be real fluid with it. So just try and get real smooth, real fluid bringing your knees up and your shoulders up and knees down and shoulders down. And just kind of bringing your knees and your shoulders up and down together to kind of create this uh, symbiotic relationship between your body, the top of your body and the bottom. Tip number five is to twist your head, shoulders, and hips all together. So like if you think of yourself looking this way, trying to twist my body around like this while keeping my head this way, very difficult because if I go like this, very easy. So whichever way you want to go, if I want to go to the left, I twist my head and my shoulders, shoulders and hips. If you want to go to the left, use your head, use your shoulders, use your hips, and you look with all of it that way. You don't want to be looking like this, locking the shoulder in, or looking like this, but your hips. You want your entire body to swivel as one. Well your top of your body is moving and your hips are staying, that's not gonna work. So you want to wind up, look around, use your shoulders, your hips, your head all together and that'll allow you to spin. Just like any sport, skiing, snowboarding, wakeboarding, whichever way your head, shoulders, and body go, then that'll follow. So that works with your board as well. So you have a board strapped to your feet. So if you send your body in a direction, your board will follow. So just uh, remember that if you want to go downwind, look downwind. If you want to go upwind, look upwind. But you don't want to just look upwind and have your shoulders locked. And you're not going to be able to ride upwind. You want to look this way, open up, open up your hips. Have the kite pulling you here, moving out that way. If you want to go downwind, my shoulders facing downwind and looking that way, and then that's the way I'll go. I'm going to go this way, that's the way I'll go. So those are some tips for you that I hope helped and 
just there's a lot more you can do as well and I'm not I'm sure I haven't covered everything but I'm just trying to help as much as I can giving you some of the things I've learned along the way so if you have anything you'd like to add to that please comment below and if you enjoy these videos subscribe for more and I'll keep them coming for the next couple months out of Doha Qatar probably travel to Oman in the next month or so do some kiting over there so just check it out subscribe like these videos we'll keep them coming for you and if you have any requests just let me know I think I have a request from some local kiters here in Qatar to do another relaunch video about relaunching in deep water because it was very hot the past couple weeks and I didn't have any uh, volunteers to film me doing deep water relaunches so I think I'll be doing one of those and I got an Apollo review coming for Toby Brower next week so that should be pretty cool but right in the 16 and I had a 10 meter Apollo last year so we'll get those going out for you guys and I'll see you next week